Well, mastering money is a tough challenge for everyone, even tougher in marriage where your spending habits are likely as different as the two of you are. So how do you work together to make your financial future bright? Lauren Grootman, who went from spending addict to recovering spender to totally debt-free, joins me to tell how she did it and how she's helping millions more recover from their poor spending choices. Lauren, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you. Yeah, and you know, you are so honest in your blogging and your writing about your own story. Mm -hmm. And you were loved beautiful things in life yep. and were pursuing them beyond your ability to pay for them and you didn't even really realize that you were in trouble, did you? Yeah, I, I didn't. You know, I was I was spending more money than I was making, you know, and, and just drowning pretty much in debt and not only in, in debt, but just in my, val I was having like a value crisis almost mm. with how I was spending money. And how, how was that affecting, like that wasn't just affecting you though, like you're in a marriage, oh, yeah. how was that affecting your husband? Yeah, so, well, this was the biggest problem is that when I was spending, I was taking care of the finances and he didn't know that I had gotten us into so much debt and I was too afraid to tell him. And so um, often what we see now is that I'm a spender and he's a saver mm -hmm. and it's a totally different dynamic with your relationship with money and so it got it got really bad like in our marriage because I was spending all the money. He wanted to save it all. We were arguing all the time. He would say things like, I just want to sleep on it and think about this purchase, which would drive me crazy. You know, as yeah. a spender, I'm like, no, I just want to buy it now. Totally. So <laughs> and you were doing what so many women do, I think even men too in yeah. marriages, like you would be buying things and hiding it in the trunk and hiding yep. the receipts and sneaking it into the house, right? I mean, yeah. that happens. No, that it happens. Happens all the time. And you know, I wasn't doing it because I, I wanted to like lie to him. Honestly, I was just trying to avoid confrontation and avoid getting in an argument with him because I knew it would turn into an argument. If he saw me bringing like, you know, $600 worth of clothes into the house, he would get upset um, knowing that we couldn't afford it. And so it was really hard for me. Like, I think that was a breaking point for me when one day I went and I spent $600 on clothes, put it in the trunk of my car, drove home and purposely waited till the next day to take it out of the car when Mark went to work, my husband went to work. and. Um, and then I brought it into the house and hung it up and took all the tags off and like pretended like it was no big deal. And I started realizing like, this is not who I am as a person. Mm. And if I don't change the way that I'm spending money um, and change my value system with the way that I'm spending money, then it's just gonna get even worse and I'm gonna get deeper and deeper into debt and my marriage is gonna suffer even more. So I'm mean, part of what was um, empowering that in your life was denial, like that you, you really didn't wanna look at it mm -hmm. kind of and I think that's so normal. You know, you feel helpless to control the debt yep. or to control the spending. So it's like, I can't face it because I don't know how to fix it, right? Exactly. So how exactly. did you change that? Ooh, I think the biggest thing for me is I had to take a look at my value system basically. Um, I had to, let's say if I was holding up a purse, I had to say to myself, okay, this purse, is this more important than me paying my mortgage this month? Or, you know, am I going to lose my house? Am I going to lose my car? And every single purchase I made, I had to weigh it against the things that I valued like the most in my life. Mm -hmm. When I started weighing those things, the answers became a lot easier for me to make. But I always tell people that when the pain of being in debt is greater than the pain of the change you need to get out of debt, mm. that's when you're gonna make the change. And I was just so sick and tired of being broke all the time and being so stressed out about money that I was willing to make those painful changes to change my spending too. And your family was such an anchor for you, you know, thinking about your kids' education, the mm -hmm. security of your husband and your kids. I mean, that, that helped you a lot too. That was kind of those values that you started saying, wait a minute, I'm choosing to make exactly. decisions that bring in security into my family's life. Yep, and so often we, I think for me, I would just spend money and not think about it. You know, I would go into a store for one thing and come out with like $200 worth of throw pillows or something like that. You know, and I think that happens to so many people is oh, that yeah. you just, you're like, how did that happen? And so I had really had to like backtrack and say, okay, like I can't be doing this anymore because it goes against everything that I'm valuing in my life. Everything that I want in my life will not happen unless I get out of this debt. And if I don't stop spending, that's never gonna happen. So I had to get really real with myself, which was really hard. I bet. Yeah. And you know, I know a budget was a big part of that. And that's like, that's like a swear word for spenders, right? <laughs> yes. Like a budget, like ugh. Yeah, it makes us like cringe. Like, like you feel, ugh. don't you feel kind of trapped and like you can't breathe, like the walls are closing in, yep. right? Constrained. Yep. How did you break through that? I think the big thing for a budget was that I had to learn that it's not there to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be, Learn, so I always think about it, and this, I talk about it in my book, The Recovering Spender, I talk about the 
the um, white fence budget analogy that I had to like kind of think of for myself. So for instance, I have four kids and I let them go play in my backyard. And they're safe in the backyard, there's a place that they can have fun, but yet they're you know, kept safe from the, the street and you know, wild dogs coming in and stuff like that, like intruders. Um, and so I had to think of a budget as kind of a fence around my money, that it was there to put a protection around me, not meant to take away all of my fun. It was meant to just give myself boundaries. I can still have fun with my money, but as long as I, you know, you know, stay within the fence, that's what I always tell myself, stay within the fence. I even have a little like screen backdrop on my phone that says stay within the fence because if I'm, if I'm in the budget, I have freedom in that budget to have more freedom in life. I'm not stressed all the time. I know where my money's going and that's given me so much more joy. Mm. Even though the word budget, you know, the thought of a spreadsheet still to this day, I'm like, oh, I just can't handle it. <laughs> but, and that's why you're so good at what you do, because you said you wanted to kind of create some uh, some spending help for people who don't like spreadsheets, who are not good right. with money, who are kind of like, you're still a spender, right? Yeah. Yep. In, in your heart. In my heart, I'm still a spender. I don't actually do the actions of spending anymore. And that's why my book is called The Recovering Spender, not <laughs> The Recovered Spender, <laughs> because I still have these natural born tendencies to want to spend money, but I just know my values are greater than, you know, than, than spending the money. And so, um, yeah, I had to really kind of just get really real with myself. Yeah, and you had to look at your triggers. Like, what is what are the things that especially send me on spending sprees or exactly. that I respond to? And and people generally do have triggers, things mm -hmm. that make them do that. What are the common triggers, or what were your triggers? Common triggers, uh, emotions, so depression, anxiety. Um, a lot of boredom is one of them. Um, and uh, we're seeing, you know, I actually did a survey when I was writing the book um, of 2,200 women, and we got to see like the biggest triggers kind of across the board. And um, loneliness was one of them, depression, anxiety, feeling like they want to give up, not having a plan, um, certain stores being triggers. Like mm -hmm. for me, you know, like any home and garden store, <laughs> like l a craft store, all of that kind of stuff. I had to get really real and try and figure that out as well. And you, you actually have rules that to this day that you live by. Yep. So you've, you've managed to put these rules in your life without feeling like they're wrecking your life. Because right. now you have so much more joy, financial mm -hmm. freedom. Tell me about some of the rules that you still have to live by. Yeah, so I don't um, typically shop online. Um, if I do shop online, usually it's with a prepaid debit card so that I can only spend a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, I don't go into Target alone. That's one of my big things. I don't go into home improvement stores alone, like uh, craft stores and that kind of thing. Um, I usually have to bring my husband along with me or a friend or some, some of that sort. Um, I can't go to like at home parties where I'm trying to be sold to because I'll cave every time. <laughs> so so I, good. yeah, so I have these certain boundaries that I set up for myself so that I don't overspend because I know that the joy of not overspending is greater than the joy of that stuff. And you know your weaknesses and you've learned kind of how to skirt around them. Now, I want to bring your husband back into this okay. because he was kind of influenced by your spending mm -hmm. habits and he was kind of starting to spend more. Like you were having more of an influence on him than right. his savings on you. Now, as you two started changing, how did that work with the two of you? Yeah, so one of the big things that we did to change is we decided to have what we call now the budget night. So we sit down the last Sunday of every month and we talk about our month ahead you know, the month that's coming up and kind of plan out the whole month with our money before it even happens. Mm. That way we're on the same page financially. With him, he, you know, he, he loves me. He wanted to make me happy. He didn't realize the damage, you know, how much debt we were in. Um, and so he, when I came clean to him and told him all the debt that we were in, um, the words that he said to me, I'll never forget. He said, I forgive you. Let's get through this together. Mm. And that was so life changing for me. It wasn't like, why did you do this? Um, you were worried that he was, was going to walk out the door. Oh, I was, yeah, I was worried he was going to walk out the door because I had just damaged, you know, our future. So I thought. And so um, so it was really important for us to get on the same page. And we still to this day, you know, we do our budget night every month and um, we're on the page, same page financially. And you know what? He actually was able to quit his job and come home and we work now together on our website. Oh, wow. And, um, and it's like a dream, like that would have never been able to happen. So we're, we're like in tune with every every step and um, I just love it, love it. You you know, you made some hard choices, it's such a good thing. If, if people are watching this and they, they, they wanna know, what are some of the signs that I might really be in trouble? Mm -hmm. So this is a moment to look at your life and we're gonna face the hard stuff right now right. together. What are the kind of questions they need to ask themselves? Right, I think they need to ask themselves um, these, these certain questions. You know, do I 
make my spending a reflection of my values. That's really, really key. Um, there, in my book, I break down all these kind of different kinds of shoppers. And I think a lot of times people think that if they don't go and you know spend a thousand dollars at a store, that they're not you know, a shopper, but I think if you're spending, you know, ask yourself, are you spending money on a credit card that you don't have? Because that means you have a shopping problem. Are you going deeper and deeper into debt? Are you feeling depressed with your money? And um, do you feel no hope? And so those are some questions that I had to ask myself. Mm. Once you come clean with yourself, then you can move on. So we faced it. People mm -hmm. right now, they just faced it. Yep. They're like, I'm in a spending crisis. What's the first thing they need to do? Just let's leave them with some practical tips. Right. The first thing is they need to admit it to one other person. I think that's really important. Not only do you have to you know, admit it to yourself, you have to admit it to one other person. And um, I kind of came up with these 12 recovering spender steps, I like to call them. Um, and so they have to admit it to another person. They need to get real with their spending. They need to take a complete inventory of how they've been spending their money because a lot of times people don't even realize where their money's going. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee it's in two places, food and just miscellaneous whatever expenses. Those are where people are overspending the most. And so once you figure out where you're overspending, then you need to figure out ways to figure out how to cut back those spending amounts. So for us, we spend about $1,000 in food a month. Mm -hmm. And when we figure that out, we cut it down to $200 a month. That's and crazy. we did that for three years because we were like so gung-ho on getting out of debt. Um, and so you have to know where your spending is happening first, and then you can make the changes to make that less and, and less. And couponing was part of it. Cash mm -hmm. purchases only was part of it. Yep. You give so many great strategies in your book, The Recovering Spender. And where, now your website, where can people read a little bit more of some of your ideas? Yeah, so you can find me at laurengrutman.com. Uh, that's where my blog is. And then the recoveringspender.com is where um, you can purchase the book and watch. I actually did a little documentary mini series using the principles of the book with a family awesome. and kind of showed how it, it all played out. So it's right there for yep. everyone. Thank you so much for You're helping welcome. us get our spending under control. You're welcome. I'm so happy to, to be here with you and talk about it. Awesome. Well, hey, you know, it's hard to do the hard work, but it's always worth it. We want to help you recover. If you're in debt, if your spending is out of control, most of us have areas that we can clean up a little bit. You can go to those resources. If you want someone to pray with you, we'd be happy to give you, uh, to, for you to give us a call and uh, just, you know, talk it through. And let's see if we can't just tackle this and get in a better place financially for ourselves, for the things that God wants us to do on this planet, for our families and our friends. Give us a call, 1-866-273-4444.